This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. We're in week three of a five-week series that's just a little different. Many of you have asked if after touring so many yachts, I've settled on anything that will make Sylvia happy yet. My perception of what would be the right yacht for us certainly has vacillated over the last three years as what I've learned from you, the audience, manufacturers, sailing courses, knowledgeable boat brokers, and my own research has molded my understanding of what is really needed for both Sylvia and I to be comfortable, safe, and happy living long-term on the water. I believe that the fog is beginning to clear and I'm settling down to refining a final list, although as you will soon see, I still have a way to go. Here are the general parameters. As with many of us, price must be the first filter. In my case, with a few rare exceptions, this means that I will be looking at a pre-owned yacht. My current target is no more than a million dollars, including refit and outfitting. For a refit budget, I'm looking at $250,000 for boats more than 10 years old, $150,000 for 5 to 10, and $50,000 for 2 to 5. For a depreciation budget, I'm estimating 10% per year for the first three years and 5% per year for the next seven with, a, with little change after 10 years old. And when we're looking at the prices of used yachts today, I'm tacking on an assumption of five to seven years until I'm ready to go. My preference is for a catamaran and I would favor dagger boards for better upwind performance and a KSP of 70 or better. Pure vinyl ester over foam core is my desired hull construction and a shaft drive would win the day on propulsion. I'd prefer not to have a flybridge helm, leaning rather to a mid bulkhead or outboard aft helms with twin helms a strong plus factor. Regardless, there must be a clear and unobstructed view of the sails with or without adjustment of the great wheel from that helm, i.e. versa helm. <clears throat> A heavy preference will be given to power furling main and foresails in all winches must be power. Finally, two to three side access owner's berths are, the fa are favored and interior spaces must be elegant with an emphasis on natural wood veneers and as little exposed fiberglass as possible. With all this in mind, I've come up with the first draft of the new Dave list and it consists of 19 yachts stretching from the early 2000s to a couple that have yet to launch hull number one. If I won the lottery, there'd be several boats added, such as Privilege, Balance, Neil, Outremer, Explocat, and Kinetic. If the budget gets trimmed, I would be adding several earlier model monohulls, such as Oyster 485, Moody 64, Contest 50, Genoa 57, and the Beneteau 55 and 60. But for now, this is the top 19 on the Dave list. We will look at four yachts a week until the last week of the series where we will be examining the top three. This week, we're counting down number 11, 10, 9, and 8. If there is a point tie, the tiebreaker was the KSP number as a final nod to sailing performance. Stay tuned to the end to see the final scoreboard. The boats in no particular order are the Allura Privilege 585 from 03 to 05, the yet-to-be-launched Aventura 45S, the Leopard 45 from 23 to 25, and the first monohull of the list, the ML50 from 22. Having a look at the profiles here, they're all beautiful vessels. They really are. Uh, the probably the, you know the Aventura 45S is probably the most bulky looking, and yet they've done a, a fantastic job at managing to uh, streamline that with the front windshield and just the curves that they've done there. When you look and see what's inside this, though, you will go, "Wow, that's a great looking boat." especially now considering the interior. Leopard 45, they managed to keep the overall look of this vessel 
really almost the same as opposed to the ballys, which really start to get stumpy as they get into a shorter. Uh, the leopards don't. Uh, you know, the shorter they get, they, they maintain their dimensions, and it, they, they really still are a very good-looking boat. The Privilege 585, I mean, she's a classic older boat. She was a very avant-garde design at the time, uh, and, and, you know, she shows her age, but still a nice vessel. Uh, the ML50, ah, my heart pounds. Beautiful, beautiful vessel inside and out, and you can, of course, see it right here. Hopping down onto the coach top or the deck top, depending on which vessel you're looking at, you can see that the uh, Aventura 45S has retained, has a beautiful mid bulkhead helm on the port side, as opposed to the starboard side for the Leopard 45. Uh, they will have, obviously, a bimini over the helm. They just haven't showed it in any of their renders. And they have a spectacular uh, upper uh, fly lounge. Of course, the Leopard 45, fantastic fly lounge upstairs, hard top over the helm, beautiful uh, sunning area. This really is uh, got almost everything the 50 has, save for the, uh, the, the, the hydraulic swim platform that some might argue is a good thing. Uh, you've got beautiful forward cockpit covered with the overhang, retractable uh, little shade area there. Um, it's just, you know, an amazing vessel. Uh, the Privilege 585, of course, much larger than these. Uh, she's got uh, a, quite an elegant uh, aft cockpit, uh, spacious, broad uh, forward deck, um, which you can, and you've seen it on uh, Sailing with Zatara, uh, beautiful hanging chairs, or they've got the beanbag chairs, the whole shebang there, but, but nothing built in such as you have on the uh, Aventura, which I forgot to mention, their full front cockpit there. There's no interior access, but you still have it. And of course, the Leopard, which has full access through. Uh, finally, the ML50, absolutely gorgeous. You have um, faux tactique decks that are molded in, so they never have any maintenance. They'll always look gorgeous. Uh, you've got uh, lots of space on the, uh, the foredeck there with areas for cushions that you can see there. Uh, on the aft decks, again, you have beautiful areas for cushion over top, your master suite in the aft, uh, a very secure, isolated cockpit area. Um, you know, my druthers, I, I might go for the more, uh, the, the larger sort of Genot open cockpits, but this is executed so beautifully. And of course, they have that epic engine room underneath that table with full access. And they have your helm, not out aft, but under cover, so that I heard one owner say he never even puts on his follies uh, when he's going outside, because of course all of the, uh, this is the other thing, all of the winches, all of the sail furling is all electric and all handled push button from the cockpit. So absolutely fantastic, hitting on all cylinders there. Heading down now into uh, the living space, the Leopard 45, again, just a smaller version of the 50, beautifully executed. Uh, again, I'd probably remove that uh, starboard side return on the U-shaped settee and open it up, probably have a few footstools instead. But overall, absolutely spectacular. The other thing you'll notice is I prefer the countertops in the 45 over the 50. The countertops on the 45 look stunning, nice and thick and beautiful cor uh, uh, Corian. Um, of course, you have that uh, front cockpit access through the saloon, beautiful uh, aft cockpit, uh, which actually feels dimensionally better than the 50, simply because the 50 feels so gigantic. And of course, you have your uh, mid uh, bulkhead mounted helm there. Uh, over to the Aventura, um, beautiful aft cockpit, built-in barbecue, still retains a forward-facing aft settee, wonderful space inside the saloon there. Uh, they've done great things, kept the sail uh, and mast central, uh, and then done a wonderful uh, thing to integrate it into the seating arrangement. It all looks tremendous in the uh, in the renders, and if if it comes out, you know, 80, 90 percent of what the renders look like, this is a this is an absolute winner. Uh, beautiful side decks, and then a full front cockpit, everything your heart could desire. 
the av the the uh, uh, privilege five eight five the Allura privilege five eight five. Well, of course, this is you you <laughs> you know. First of all, the aft um, cockpit, which isn't shown here, is extremely spacious. We've all seen it a dozen times in Zatara. Then you walk in, and the saloon is nothing short of epic. Uh, you have that spectacular forward port side. Um, uh, uh, dinette there with a beautiful curved settee. You have the club chairs or uh, or a, uh, a full um, couch area over forward uh, starboard. So you have my two separate areas. Um, you've got your uh, chart table and, and um, uh, nav station uh, aft uh, port. And then aft starboard, you have a bar. Of course, everybody needs a bar uh, because your actual galley is galley down, which in a perfect world is what I would prefer because I don't want to be staring at my dishes and I don't always wash them right away. Um, over to the ML. Um, again, this is the beauty of a monohull. You naturally have two seating areas uh, in your in your saloon there, uh, one with the, the dinette and one with uh, sort of a coffee table area and your lovely L-shaped settee, beautiful um, nav station, uh, midships port, uh, absolutely, you know, a gorgeous setup. Your your galley uh, down the uh, the starboard side, uh, absolutely gorgeous. The finishes are gorgeous. Little elements like glass bottoms to the upper. Uh, a cupboard pull-out shelf area so you can see what's up there for we people like my mother was. Uh, just a, a beautiful space. Okay, heading into the accommodations then. I'll start back at the ML, which is my favorite layout, the standard Oyster layout, full authorship, aft master, beautifully executed. Uh, coming up to the forward there, you've got... Um, a bunk room to the starboard, and then a beautiful V-berth uh, VIP suite in the bow. Uh, it just, in my opinion, the only layout for a monohull. The uh, uh, privilege, this is the mother of all uh, um, forward uh, cabins for your owner. Although, quite honestly, I think the 510 or the 5 Series probably have it beat because they go full wall-to-wall -wall in a full beam uh, with access. You can walk around the base of the bed. But this is spectacular, to say the very least, when you see it. Um, so, you know, full three-side access, lots of privacy, beautiful settees. I've seen keyboards in here, beautifully uh, outfitted um, heads and showers. Uh, heading then on the port side, aft to your VIP, one of your VIP suites, uh, thwart ship, uh, semi-access up the sides, wonderful uh, facilities in there. Uh, over to the starboard side, uh, starboard forward, you have a, a fore-aft, forward-facing uh, um, berth, but not in the center of the hull, off to the side of the hull on the port side with full facilities there and in the aft, a mirror to the, uh, the port side there. <clears throat> the uh, Aventura, they have hit it out of the park. They are the first manufacturer to build a 45 with full athwart ship, three-sided walk around natural height berths. Absolutely fantastic. So you can see your port hull there is all for the owner absolutely amazing all the space and luxury you could want fantastic head and shower and your owner suite is wonderful and the cherry on top you have in suite access to the cockpit amazing on the starboard side massive vip suite there absolutely gorgeous again a thwart ship full three-sided they're not going to want to leave and then forward you have an athwart ship uh, with pseudo three sides and, and full facilities there as well. Absolutely amazing in a 45-foot cat. The Leopard 45, again, a, a, a smaller version of the 50, although in this they give you the full 
starboard hull, which actually probably, save for the width of the hull, gives you more space in your owner's suite than the 50 does. But beautifully executed. Uh, again, you have limited access up the sides. I would not call that a full three-side access uh, for aft berth, but there you have it. Over into the passenger side, again, two heads, private en suites to the uh, two suites you've got, and you have the potential for a crew suite uh, in the bow. Okay, getting into the numbers. Now, of course, we're going to ignore the top line, the, the prices. You already know the target is no more than a million uh, outfitted and refitted. Uh, and all of the, you know, the budgets for the base boat then vary depending on the age and the requirement for the refit budget. Uh, but uh, looking at length overall, uh, our longest one here, of course, is the uh, privilege uh, at 55.75 feet. Then the ML being a monohull is at 54 uh, 0.13 feet, which, you know, makes it about equivalent to a 45 foot cat. Uh, then you've got the Leopard at 45 even and the Aventure at 44.29. As far as beam goes, uh, you've got the massive privilege at 30.33 feet. Uh, then you've got the uh, Aventura at f uh, four, uh, 24.6 feet, the Leopard at 24.1 feet, and the ML at uh, 15.7 to 16 feet. Draft on these. So the least draft is your Aventura. This is shaping up to be an amazing vessel. 4.6 feet. Then it's your Leopard at 4.9, the Privilege at 5.75, and the ML at 7 feet. The uh, light ship displacement on these, uh, the lightest of the bunch is the Aventura at 24,000 pounds or 10.9 tons. Then it's the Leopard at 32,800 pounds or 14.9 tons. So nine tons heavier than the Aventura. Wow, I'm not sure what they're building Leopards of. Uh, the Privilege uh, is uh, 39,200 pounds or 17.7 tons. Uh, and then the ML, of course, at 45,305 pounds or 20.5 uh, tons. Upwind sail area. Heading across, it's the Privilege far out in the lead at uh, 2,200 square feet. Uh, after that, it's the Leopard at 1,460 uh, then it's the ML at 1356 and the Aventura at 1350. Uh, finally, uh, engines, it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, the Aventura and the Leopard are at 45. Of course, the privilege being a huge yacht at, at uh, that length is uh, twin hundreds. And the ML is a, six, a single 110. As far as fuel and water capacities go, I couldn't find black water on any of them. Uh, but uh, the rest of it, it's the privilege uh, as to be expected with 1,400 liters of fuel and 1,200 liters of water. Uh, then it's uh, basically the Aventura and uh, Leopard are tied. 700 liters of fuel and 800 liters of water for the Aventura, 780 liters of water for the Leopard. And then finally, the ML is 650 liters of fuel and 600 liters of water. Okay, getting into some of the numbers here, I could find bubkiss from anybody on uh, as far as the practical uh, space and capacities go. Uh, we really need to start holding our manufacturers and brokers accountable to have this information available. Interior square footage, exterior square footage, interior enclosed storage volume, exterior locker volume, and then total fridge and freezer capacity. I'm sure that fridge and freezer, I mean, if I dug deep into their manuals, I might be able to find it, but wow, it was tough finding on the websites. Hull material. Okay, so this is uh, a bit challenging. I couldn't find what the privilege was made of at all. I'm assuming it's probably the same as they are today, which is a polyester. Uh, and uh, they have, a, a, I think, a vinyl ester outer coat uh, to avoid osmosis. Um, so they're, you know, all about the same, uh, privilege, Aventure and Leopard. It's a uh, polyester over, um, a, a foam core, uh, with, um, uh, some kind of anti-osmosis layer coating on the outside. Uh, the ML, 
will probably be the, the best of the hulls, vacuum bagged with solid glass below the waterline and a foam core above, uh, working with vinyl ester, polyester, and epoxy resins. Generally, that means a vinyl ester outer layer outside the foam, polyester inner layer inside the foam. Uh, so there you have it. As, as such, it would be the leader of the bunch. As far as voltages and battery banks, it was challenging to find them. I found the Aventura was 12 volt system to be expected. I'm sure the Leopard is as well. I know it is. Uh, and your battery bank is 255 amp hours or 3.6 kilowatt hours. Okay, finally, getting into the performance indicators. Sale area to displacement or indicators of power. Here it is, the privilege, 585 at 30.6. Now, this is a, a little unfair in that this is such a long boat. Um, and But, I mean, there are other factors. That's why it's in this mix. This isn't a com uh, an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of boats for size in this. This is an all-over comparison of boats that I might want to actually live on. So that's the way it is there. Um, the next up is going to be the Aventura at 25.9. Then it's the Leopard at 22.8 and the ML at 17. Displacement to hull length at the waterline or indicators of heaviness. Here it's a uh, lowest number wins and again it's the privilege you know sheer size as well the length because you're comparing it to waterline length. Next up is the um, Aventura uh, in, by a significant margin at 123.3 versus the Leopard at 185.5, and the ML almost the same as the Leopard at 187.9. Finally, uh, we're looking at Kelsale. Of course, we can't look at it uh, for the um, ML. We'll have to look at the Bruce number there. But on the three, um, uh, on the three catamarans, the privilege shows uh, 88, the Aventura 79, and the Leopard 69. So that Aventura, 79. I mean... This this is not a a a a, a uh, cat. Uh, what do they call it? Condo condo moran. It's not a condo moran. This and yet it has the space and the facilities and the the amenities of a condo moran. Really, quite something. As far as Bruce number goes, um, you've got the privilege at one point four, the Aventure at one point three, the Leopard at one point two, and the ML at one point one. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. You can also join our crew on Patreon where you can enjoy ad-free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specifications and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few bucks a month. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing at Camp David Patreon channel in the description below where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual sailing training. Okay, refreshing our memories and asking what would Sylvia say? First up, we're looking at the ML50 from 22. This is an absolutely stunning vessel. I wish all contemporary catamarans were outfitted the way this one is. <clears throat> and you'll see what I mean. You've got a beautiful foredeck area, very nice lounging area, gorgeous interior cockpit. No, you don't have the wind in your hair, but boy, are you isolated. And look at this interior. This is the epitome of a modern interior. Beautiful walnut, curved edges, um, counter color uh, uh, piping around the cushions, beautiful galley. Uh, everything is there. And look at this owner suite. I mean, holy mackerel, is that elegant. And there's your VIP suite. Okay, we're going to do a speed tour to remind us. There's your aft swimming platform. Very nice. Built-in dinghy davits, keeping your dinghy nice and high. Um, you've got areas, of course, to put the, uh, the tent areas that you can now get forward and aft. Beautiful helm station, solid metal uh, safety rails, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And beautiful gin and tonic seats, lots of ventilation into your cockpit there, and then heading down below. Oh my gosh. Talk about the epitome of a modern Vancouver, uh, you know, uh, uh, tower top condo. Absolutely gorgeous with this beautiful satin finished walnut. Uh, in this one, you don't see the uh, the piping around the cushions. It's not in an alternate color, but it's there and it looks so nice. 
a beautiful uh, um, uh, nav table area, separate seating, of course, for your eating and your lounging, uh, and beautiful paneling on the, the walls themselves. I mean, look at these doors. And of course, those are watertight. They seal tight. Lots of ventilation in your guest suite. You know, for a V-berth, this is unbelievable. You can lay in bed and look out those side windows and feel completely in touch with the water. Look at this head. Absolutely gorgeous in absolutely every detail. Your guests have a dedicated dry head there. Everything is done so, so nicely with tons of ventilation. Here is your uh, beautiful bunk cabin. Uh, everything you need in there. Uh, your TV comes up and out of the back of your uh, uh, nice coffee uh, settee here with a lovely little uh, cocktail table in front of it. And then moving into your galley, I mean... Wow, all your indirect lighting, everything is just done to such a highly professional and finished degree. And everything aesthetically is so absolutely extraordinary. I just wish every catamaran manufacturer would hire ML to design their interiors. Look at this owner's suite. I mean, it's unbelievable. It is absolutely the epitome of elegance and class, that uh, that uh, different colored uh, hard headboard with the uh, backlighting there, highlighting it, all the ventilation in the uh, roof area, uh, beautiful vision out the windows from your bed, beautiful vision up out of the top, and here is your ensuite. I mean, absolute elegance from every standpoint. Y nobody could you know, you just can't poke a hole in this. As far as, you know, a modern vessel goes and the aesthetic, ML just have it hands down. Nobody touches them. Uh, they're, they're absolutely outstanding. You've got this or you've got the beautiful classics of, say, a Passport. Those are the two ends of the spectrum. These guys do the modern end absolutely flawlessly. Okay, next up is the Privilege 585, one of my favorites. We hardly even have to look at this one simply because we've all seen it so many times on Zatara. But here is your cockpit, absolutely beautiful. There is your uh, saloon, holy mackerel. And then, then you've got your, uh, your uh, galley down, and there's your master suite. Uh, I mean, we're going to do a quick speed to tour here. Um, looking at your, your uh, cockpit area with uh, the hard bimini here, there are various models that have uh, soft-sided biminis, uh, but this is the hard bimini, and then moving into you know a vision of sartorial elegance in this uh, saloon. Absolutely spectacular. There is your, uh, your, your nav station. I hate where they've got the TVs in this. They should have found a place to build it in, but whatever. Uh, small price to pay. Look at the ceiling. Look at that lovely couch area over here as opposed to Zatara. This one has the couch, not the club seats. You got your bar in the corner, you know, heading down. We're uh, going to go to this. This is the, uh, the, the, the sideways forward facing berth that t we talked about. It's got its own settee. Look at the teak and holly floors. Look at the detail in the round windows in the doors. I mean, unbelievable. This is your master suite. There's that piano keyboard. There's your settee and your stairs up into your suite. This one even has that incredible rounded door up into the saloon, which is so funky. Uh, I mean, wh what can you say about this? Look at this incredible beech wood or maple, the, the, the high gloss and the, the highlighting of how beautiful that grain is. Heading down, you're into your uh, incredible uh, galley down, lots of space, lots of ventilation with above and side windows that open, lots of counter space. Here's another forward side mounted uh, guest berth, own settee, stunning uh, head. I mean, what can you say? This thing's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, moving on to the Aventura 45S. This one I've only got renders on because it hasn't launched. Beautiful aft cockpit, lots of openness, beautiful forward uh, faux cockpit with the uh, cup holders, nice helm, beautiful uh, sky lounge, and the interior. Look at that. Remembering, this is a 45-foot yacht. 
this is your master suite in a 45 foot yacht natural height bed full three side walk around access massive windows here's your bunk room lots of space lots of light beautiful uh, 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 day head here's your VIP room full access out into the cockpit let's do that speed tour now now this is a speeded up version of the, uh, the the compilation I did using all the renders that I had just to give us a sense of what this looks like and a, a quick walk around it again to remind you. I mean, if this thing turns out to be half of what the renders indicate, this is an absolute winner. Look at this beautiful saloon, all the detail, uh, lots of space, lots of opening, lots of light. Uh, off to the starboard here, that counter waterfalls down there. Uh, beautiful beautiful uh, built-in shelves, even a, a, a nav station up at the front where you could watch keep. Here's another angle looking aft. Uh, you can see that the wraparound kitchen there looks real nice. Um, all of the details, they've gone with a, a Fountain Peugeot style interior coffee table versus a gigantic eating table taking up all the space because you're going to eat outside most of the time anyways. You can see the doors out the aft there, open the entire aft of the boat up to the cockpit. Nice area for your TV up on the uh, the port side aft uh, saloon wall. I mean, really, oh, and a full-sized fridge. A full-sized fridge. I forgot to mention that. Holy mackerel. Now you've got access from the... Um, the cockpit, not only the saloon, but the cockpit into this amazing owner suite, full three side, natural height, walk around berth, a beautiful headboard. I mean, what more can you say? This is amazing. You've even got storage, as you can see, underneath the berth. You've got indirect lighting. You head forward, massive space here for uh, stowage on the way to the head. Uh, still, you've got windows even looking down, but they bring in light as you walk through that sort of walk-through closet area. Then a beautiful owner's head. I mean, what's not to like about this over to the other side uh you've got your uh vip suite uh or one of them you got two of them here this one they have total privacy uh they again have an athwart ship three side walk around natural height bed they've got full access up and out into the cockpit and of course all the ventilation that goes with that they've got a wet head and then uh we're going to go uh forward on the starboard uh and into the bunk room here uh i mean again i'd probably turn this into a utility room but regardless you've got the bunk room here you've got stowage you can see all around and then forward you've got uh the other vip suite with an athwart ship uh at the sort of the, the elevated height that you normally see a bow based athwart ship in but look at the storage in the cabinets and the closets there it's it's really quite a vessel and again we'll have another look at that forward cockpit uh absolutely amazing this boat especially at the price point holy mackerel last up we've got the leopard 45 from uh, 23 to 25 here's that beautiful aft cockpit with uh what i would always have is the teak table but i would have a gloss a varnish on that sealing it off Again, this looks very reminiscent of the 50. It's just a little more compact. They've done a great job. They have all the great features, save for the hydraulic lift again, which many would argue uh, is better not to have even on the 50. Uh, here is your owner suite. Again, you get the full uh, hull for this. So you have a very nice little uh, table there, a makeup table, a very large ensuite, and lots of stor storage there. Uh, then you've got a guest suite bow. Off to our speed tour on this, and this is from one of my previous videos. Again, I've speeded it up, so take your gravel. Um, beautiful finish on the, uh, the, the, the cockpit ceiling. The um, shades all roll up into uh, recessed covered areas. There's my friend Daniel walking around prepping everything. You've got beautiful indirect lighting, really nice access up to your uh, mid bulkhead mounted helm. The aesthetic of that black stripe that carries all the way through the saloon, all the way into the forward cockpit. I mean, everything is here. Nice access to all your ropes and winches and everything you need here at the helm. A hard top over top that really makes you feel secure and comfortable. Access up onto that absolutely spectacular fly lounge. 
and you know good visibility to to manage a boat of this size um and then you've got safety your, your your rails are all the way down the side there and of course with the 45 the big benefit of the 45 versus the 50 is you can easily access the top of that sail bag just standing at your normal height so if anything goes wrong you can access it easily nice um princess seats up at the bow and then you've got your beautiful forward cockpit that has a lovely sheltered roof, but with a, a, a sunroof a, a slider there that you can slide back to let more light in. I mean, this thing really has it all. I wish it had solid side rails, but you can't have everything. Uh, there's that, that piece that I was talking about. I mean, it's just so beautifully executed. And aesthetically, that black line just heads straight down. You've got that slider there, and then you've got your sunroof in the saloon, and then you've got the black piece in the aft cockpit. Beautifully done. And then inside, again, all the indirect lighting. Uh, this is uh, the, the newer models, of course, with the darker uh, finish. This, it, 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 I, I wish they had an elegance package that had real wood finish or real veneer. I understand they're, they're servicing the, um, the charter market, but uh, it would be really nice to have that. Uh, the, 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 look at the countertops. I love the countertops in this versus the 50. The 50s are very thin, about a centimeter, centimeter 1.2 centimeters. This is, looks like a full thickness countertop. It looks really good. And they've done a tremendous job uh, with the indirect lighting on this. Uh, so again, you, you can see the size of the cockpit here. It's very, very comfortable. Um, heading down now into uh, your master suite. In this one, they had the uh, fitted carpet, which I thought was an excellent touch of luxury. You can see you're quite uh, restricted in your access up the side of the bed. It's not bad, but wow, the window space is absolutely fantastic. I would love that. Love this chest of drawers here. Lots of storage space. And then in you go into uh, your beautiful ensuite with a massive shower, lots of uh, counter space for uh, Sylvia's Pharmacy. And, um, you know, what, what can you argue about here? It's, it's a gorgeous place to be and to live. Uh, we're going to head across then, see what your, uh, your passengers have. Of course, uh, you've got that forward-facing nav and the skylights, which I absolutely love. And then uh, heading into the aft, you've got one VIP suite, very comfortable, lots of ventilation, beautiful uh, head, uh, semi-dry head, I would say, or you could make it dry. Um, and then uh, heading forward, you've got another private ensuite head uh, for this. And uh, yeah, I mean, semi-dry, it, 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 it's not right on top of the toilet, that's for sure. A very comfortable space here and access into the four peak as well. I mean, it's you're going to want to be uh, really in love if you're sleeping as a couple in there. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, and you know, it's, it's a fantastic boat. So that's it. So how did they all do in the new Dave score? Well, there are the numbers. We're getting close to the top now. We're at 11, 10, 9, and 8. So these are real contenders. Leopard 45, uh, is, is in the 11th spot. Then the Aventura 45S, which is one of those few that I could probably afford to buy new, assuming the prices don't go berserk once they really get them into production. Uh, the Privilege 585 and that ML50, our very first mono haul of the bunch. So looking across this then, um, of the group, the ML wins, and I, can, I, I imagine you can see why overall. Uh, interior living, and again, bear in mind this consolidates uh, space, comfort, flexibility, convenience, elegance, the whole shebang. Uh, the ML, 10 out of 10. I mean, that interior, the way it's laid out, the quality, the comfort, it, you, you just can't do better than that. It's spectacular. The privilege, very close to it, but you know, obviously a little bit more dated, but gorgeous. Uh, the Aventura, solid 8 out of 10, which is spectacular for a for a smaller production vessel, given what they've done in those hulls with the owner suite. I mean, wow. Uh, the Leopard is 7 out of 10. Very, very nicely done. But again, the materials, they're just a little industrial for my taste. Exterior living. 
Um, here, of course, the ML, not as well as uh, the catamarans. You just can't do it, but they've done a great job with what they have. They're a 6 out of 10. The Privilege is a 6 out of 10, as with most older uh, cats. There's no real um, interesting things like a, a sky lounge or a forward cockpit or anything of that nature. Uh, the Leopard here, it's 10 out of 10. You can't get better than what Leopard does with your external living space, your beautiful sheltered forward cockpit with interior access to it, your aft cockpit, your, your uh, sun lounge up top, your hard top over your helm station, absolutely knocks it out of the park. Aventura, a very solid eight. You've got a beautiful four, fo faux front cockpit, you have a very nice sky lounge and a, a very nice uh, aft cockpit. And the one thing that Aventura does that probably maybe should have bumped it up one point uh, would be the external cockpit access to your uh, master suite. I think that's spectacular. Light Air's performance. Um, overall, you know, it's the Privilege and the Aventura that are sort of 8 out of 10s there. Uh, the Leopard 7 and the ML5. I mean, it's, it's a monohull, but it's a very nice monohull. Uh, upwind performance. This is where the ML, of course, shines. It's 9 out of 10. It's a monohull. The rest are 6s. They don't have dagger boards. Helm position, all, I would score them all about the same. Uh, quality. Uh, your ML and your Privilege, solid 8, if not 9 out of 10. And then your Aventuras and your Leopards, 7 out of 10. So what we have here is the Privilege, Aventura and Leopard, the three cats are tied at 44. And so they are rated based on their KSP. And the ML uh, is at 45. And so it is top of the pile. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. That's three weeks out of five. We're up to number eight, and I can see. I, I, I'd love to hear from you your comments about this. For the first time, we've entered a mono hull into the mix. Talk to me about what you think about this, what your opinions are on the scoring, and any technical thoughts you might have that again may sway my decision once again. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>